Welcome back. We are going to be talking about maps today and how to unlock meaning from them. So here are the two most common different types of maps that we have around us. You're either going to encounter on most maps a Robinson projection. So you can see that this one has more correct sizes and shapes of the land masses as it gives the spherical shape that of course our, our world is a sphere. So it gives a fairly accurate view of the sizes of the oceans and the distances across lands. But you're also going to come across these Mercator projections and this was a map that came around in the 1500s to show directions more accurately. So it gives a more accurate view of the land areas near to the equator but it kind of distorts them based on the size of their land near the poles. And again, that's due to trying to make a flat map out of a round world that we have. So let's go to the next slide. We're going to talk about the compass rose on this slide. Now the compass rose is going to show, it's, a, it's actually this right here is the compass rose, and it's going to be some sort of a drawing that will indicate the different directions. So all compass roses are going to give you um, the cardinal directions, north, south, east and west. So by looking at a compass rose you can understand the main directions of a map. So for example if we start here at this snack stand here you could see that the swing set is north of the snack stand or the slide is east from the snack stand or the teeter-totters are south of the snack stand or the picnic tables are west. But there's also another type of directions that are called intermediate directions. So here we have another compass rose and we've got the cardinal directions we talked about on the last page. So we've got north, east, south, and west. And once again those are the cardinal directions or the, the main directions on the compass rose. But then we also have these intermediate directions. Um, so intermediate means in between. So we've got northwest is in between north and west. Northeast is in between north and east. Southwest in between south and west. And southeast in between south and east. Now notice that all of the intermediate directions either start with north or south. So you don't have an east-south or a west-north they always start with either north or south. Northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Another feature on map on maps are going to be the map keys. So the map key is going to help you unlock what the map means. So sometimes these map keys are also called a legend. And cartographers, the people who make maps or study maps, they use symbols to show special things on a map. So for example, let's try and find where the symbol is for a river on a map. Do you think you can find it? Right over here it looks like it'd be a good symbol for a river. Let's go to the zoo next. Do you think you could find the symbol for the zoo? Right over here I guess with that kangaroo. How about for a hospital? Could you find the symbol for the hospital? Yep, right here. So I'm not going to go on and on, but it's just going to be symbols that you can utilize to show where some of these locations would be on a map. So these symbols are going to help you locate those spots within a map. The next component I want to talk about is a map key. So obviously when you're looking at a map, it's a smaller version of what's really out there in the world. So obviously the United States is much much larger than this image on your computer screen right now. So we need to have some sort of a way that shows the the relationship between the distance on the map and the distance in real life. And that's where this map scale comes into play. So you could see that from this distance right here one inch is actually equal to 200 miles. So let's use this ruler tool right here to find out what the distance between Denver and St. Louis is in real life. So on this ruler it looks like the distance between Denver and St. Louis is four and a half inches. So all we would need to do is set up a conversion so we've got four and a half inches and if one inch is equal to 200 miles 
That means we would take 4.5, four and a half inches, times 200. So the total distance in real life between Denver and St. Louis is 900 miles. So the map scale is a tool that we can use to show the relationship between the distances on a map and the distances in real life. Okay, the next slide I want to take a look at are map inserts. So the, the map on this screen shows the states of Hawaii and Alaska in a different way than what was shown on the previous screen. So on this screen, these states are shown on inset maps. So you can see that they're a little bit different because they're a little bit out of the way from the other areas. You can't exactly see them. So sometimes you're going to see uh, large images or sometimes they're going to be something related or zoomed in. So this is a locator image that's just going to pull a little bit more information about the United States for you. Finally, I want to talk with you about lines of latitude and longitude. So how can we find spots, exact locations in the world? Uh, so map makers have created this system of grids that give us a way of finding these exact locations. So to find a location, we use a system of grids known as latitude and longitude. Lines of longitude are also sometimes called meridians, and lines of latitude are also sometimes called parallels. So latitude lines are the flat lines, so you could think of them kind of like a ladder. You can climb up them, so even though the rungs on the ladder go horizontally side to side, you can go up and down them like a ladder. So lines of latitude are flat, but they tell you how high you are and lines of longitude go up and down, but they tell you how far you are east or west. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned something about how to use maps.